live from New York. It's Ask an Engineers and Ask Spark Fun all yeah. in one tonight. We've got Welcome. an exciting show tonight. Welcome to another fabulous Ask Engineer uh, Engineers because we have multiple engineers today. Yeah. I'm Lady Ada, the um, primary engineer, I guess. <laughs> and uh, with me is Phil on camera control. We also yeah. have uh, Trevor, Pierce, Pete, and Dia. Some right. of whom are engineers. I actually, I don't check their yeah. certificates when they come in. It's all good. We're all engineers today. And we've yeah. got an exciting show with all sorts of cool stuff. That's right. Here at the Adafruit Factory. That's right. So normally at this point in the show, we talk about all the things that we're going to show and new projects and all that. But tonight is a special it's show. It's all you. It's going to be talking about all the cool things that goes on in the world of open source hardware and SparkFun and you're in town and all the stuff. Um, the rumors are not true. Uh, we did not merge. It's not Ada. Ada, oh my gosh, really? That's yeah, a Ada Spark Fruit Fun. That's not true. Uh, fruit, fruit Fun. Fruit Fun. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I would entertain it just for the name. Spark yeah. Fruit. Yeah. Spark Fruit. Yeah. Spark Fruit. Ada Fun. Fruit Fun. Really yeah. Fruit Fun. So. Okay. Fruit Fun. I think they say it's like an '80s like like yeah. gummy thing that you would eat. And like, but we'll say. Like the night. Like knock off Walmart fruit roll. The, the, yeah, the, the yeah, night, yeah. The night is young. So okay. So Check, first up, same ingredients as fruit roll-ups. For, <laughs> first up on the show, before we do introductions, uh, the code tonight is SparkFun. Um, Ten percent off everything Native Fruit Store. Use SparkFun. Um, bizarre. Wow. But, yeah. So, so if you like Adafruit stuff, don't, use I don't think it'll work the other way. <laughs> if you so, like Adafruit stuff, use use the. Uh, do you? Yeah. Yeah. So, is it Adafruit? Because that'd be really. Yeah. Funny. It's not. It's MFNY twenty thirteen. Oh. All right. All right. So we'll yeah. When you guys will do, uh, you can give out your your yeah code. multi coupon code. Okay. So first up, uh, let's do some introductions. Starting with Dia over there, if you can get the mic oh. and uh, tell everyone who you are and what you do at SparkFun. Uh, I'm Dia Campbell. I'm in the engineering department. Okay. I handle Just all of our sorry, uh, engineering department. I handle all of our wearable electronics. So I am the SparkFun Becky, <laughs> yeah. Becky of SparkFun, Spark Beck. I don't, I don't know where to go with that. No, okay. And so you you um, like design wearables, you do projects, tutorials. You have a lovely skirt on, which is glittering. I don't know if you can tell via video, but it's lit up and awesome. So yeah, do I, I also do I do uh, a lot of education stuff with our education department, mm -hmm. a lot of classes and workshops, and um, a lot of outreach. I've done a lot of traveling this year, going to events and just talking to people about what e-textiles is and why they wish they were doing it. And why do you think e-textiles is awesome? Um, and like a short thing. <laughs> Three words or less. Um, I, I think it's um, I think it's portable. I think it's soft. I think it's intuitive. I think everybody knows that electronics can be um, can be useful, and people don't entirely understand how um, how much a part of of their life it can be seamlessly. Yeah. You know, just just wear it. Just warm and and comfortable and and with you like your favorite hoodie. Okay. Uh, but also doing your iPhone things. Yeah. And one All thing right. I noticed that you go to a lot of the the comic cons and things like that. Like costuming seems to yes. be the next maker frontier where they're combining really cool electronics because all the like top characters are like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to make a um, Iron Man arc yes. reactor or I want to make stuff is that one of the things I that you've seen I love conventions that's something I've been doing for a long 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 time I've been going to uh, Dragon Con for the last 13 years yeah um, so that's a community that means a lot to me and um, they're really receptive and that is where I find the largest number of people who've never heard of us never knew they could do this and I, I get to go talk to people and do workshops and I can see people in that place I was in the first time somebody told me conductive thread existed where they're they are positively vibrating because they have just found the outlet for a hundred ideas that have been mm. rattling around in their back of their head and that's probably um, doing what I do that's probably the most profound moment I can share with somebody cool. is that moment that they they realize that that's possible and it's approachable and it's something that they can have and something that they can do and that's just amazing for me awesome what is the next um, event that you're gonna be at that, that you know right now um actually the next one is the online news association conference that's Whoa. that's a weird one do they dress up like something I wish <laughs> That'd be like, cool. like, how like much Time better would that be your favorite reporter yeah <laughs> Clark Kent. Oh, okay. Of course. Oh, excellent. Obviously. Um, yeah, no, the, um, the convention season is a little bit winding down now, and uh, I don't travel to a ton of them. I mostly do the local ones in Dragon Con right now. Okay. Okay. All right, next up, Pete. Hello. Pete, from, from 
Ask Pete. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Pete Doctor. I am the Director of Engineering at Sparkfun Electronics. Did I say that right? Yeah. 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 Electronics. Yeah, that's your job. It is. Yes, it yeah. is. <laughs> and how long have you been there? Oh, geez. Uh, eight and a half years. So, like, near, like, the beginning of the forming of the company? You're yeah. Like, you're, like, employee number four or something? I was employee number four, yes. Four. Wow. Uh, good guess. Good guess. It was exactly right. Um, awesome. And so, what do you do, like, kind of on a daily basis? <laughs> a lot of email, it seems. A lot of email, uh, yeah. I watch a lot of projects. Uh, I watch the uh, project tickets go by, make sure that everything's going smoothly. So, you kind of juggle the, you juggle the engineering. How many people are in the engineering department? Oh, 20 now? 21? Wow. It was 19 when we did the retreat, and then we hired three more people. Yeah, we just hired, we actually just hired when three When you go on the retreat, engineers. did you make, like, twig electronics or something? <laughs> actually, what happens on the retreat? Uh, stays, stays on, on the, the retreat. retreat. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> okay, don't want to know. Um, it, Let's uh, just back up a little yeah. bit and talk team, more about your... Team ideas. building is a very large part of what we do. Okay. Um, so... All right. uh, uh, yeah, sorry. And so, uh, <laughs> what's like a, a, a recent project that you worked on that people would be familiar with? Oh, jeez. I don't get to do a lot of design anymore. Mm. Um, what was your last SP video? I, uh, I just saw part of it. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, you do. You do a, um, oh, a bi weekly did, video? Or uh, I do, I do a, a monthly video, yes, okay. according to Pete. Yeah, yeah, and and what, do people like get questions and you like answer them? Or, like, yes, what's, we've, we've got a queue of questions that people uh, either put in the in the uh, 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 comment. the comment section or they email it to us, um, and I go through the list and go, hmm, I can't answer that. Well, I can answer that one, and then I'll go answer that one. Okay, so if you if you don't work on engineering as much now, what uh, do you have like a favorite project or product that you worked on, or like what's your first product or project that you worked on? <laughs> the uh, Porto Rotary phone was oh, my cool. first project. Yeah, that's a nice project. I touted uh, that thing around to every maker event and everything. Oh uh, man, I was the guy yeah. that got that ringer to work. Sweet, oh, excellent. So. Yeah, yeah, you need like, ne was, negative 70 volts or something That ridiculous. was one of the iconic SparkFun projects. I remember when I was, every Friday, Nate would send me an email at Make, and I would do a Friday product post on Make, because it was such a new thing. Like, what do you yeah. mean you get all this Maker stuff? And the, um, the rotary cell phone was something I brought to every conference when people said, well, what's the Maker movement? And I said, it's like this. Check it. Yeah. I'm Check like, it. This this is what it's like. Spring. You know, it's like <laughs> taking old stuff and putting modern electronics in it, sharing it in a public way, um, talking about how you can reclaim things. So, yeah, excellent. Yeah, All hacking. Right. That's I'm a large part of it. Glad okay, to cool. see that you're part of it. All right, Pierce. Sure. Next up. Uh, I'm Pierce. I am the technical re researcher at SparkFun. Um, it's close to research and development, but a little different. Um, I've been with the company five years as of September 10th. Um, uh, my main uh, duties are uh, seeing what the new technology is, um, seeing what's going on in the market, um, and pitching new product ideas to, to the engineers. What's, what's, a pro what's a project that you pitched that was like unanimously disliked? Oh, uh, there's... <laughs> this week. Because this one, I want to hear that, because that's one of the best one, because it's like, yeah. it's like, for real? Like, that's a good one. What's the it's, one that you were like, those bastards did not take my idea? Oh, well, there's a uh, long list. Yeah, all right, a, let, it let, happens let, so this... Get week, it out. This meeting happens every Monday morning, and around Monday so at lunchtime, grumpy. I got I got to go out and get lunch somewhere and just collect my thoughts because they, oh, there's all man. this stuff that like Sending this is gonna be awesome. Design. This is gonna be the next big thing, and everyone was like, I would never use that. Why Why are you? Jeez. That time? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what are the. What's one that really, you, when you lie down at night, you're just like. Yeah. I'm a any anything that interfaces with a Mac or an Apple item, it gets yeah. shot down really. So cool. like any sort of like a pin thirty connector type exactly. thing. Yeah. yeah, those are always yeah, a little I'm tough. I'm kind of a Mac fanboy, so no, I remember one of your posts. I think you talked about the flashlight. I think MakerShed has it. It's like yeah. you can kind of reprogram and everything. Yeah. And we looked at it too, and we all we came to the same conclusion. Yeah. It wasn't really a product that we could sell and support. Mm -hmm. But I like how you had a full post about well, here's all the cool things you can do with it anyways. Yeah. Because you know, Lamore has a box mm. of stuff that I have boxes and boxes. I have to do the same yeah. thing. I'm like, yeah, I get all the stuff, and then you know, there's always like the dream. Mm -hmm. You're like, you yeah. see a photo, and you're like, oh my god, that's so cool! It's a Wi-Fi hard drive, yeah, programmer dongle thing, and, and you get it, and then you're just like, oh man, it just like fell apart in my hand. It doesn't boot, and it lasts like mm -hmm. five minutes in battery, and you're like, yeah. this sucks, and you're then you're stuck with it, and you're like, and I can't even give it to anybody because it sucks. When you say so like much. research, what um, 
what places do you look online for ideas, or what? Where do you um, find stuff? Do people? Do you have salespeople contact you? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. So like, you're like, hi, I'm you're a, at Mel Sales Rep, and I'd like to tell you about. Yep. Da, 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 oh, yeah. da, da, da. Do you actually use any of those suggestions? Huh? Yeah, uh, uh, occasionally. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, we have a, a bunch of different uh, sales reps that come and pay me a visit. If I'm lucky, I get lunch. Oh wow! Yeah. So they actually, yeah. they'll like yeah. they're like they'll like here's our latest wares. Yeah. They, what's your newest favorite sensor? Yeah. Cause you probably get a lot of uh, sensor people coming in. Cause you guys do oh, sensors the, a lot. Um, well, I don't know. My, my, my favorite sensor, that, uh, uh, the Austria Microsystems Lightning Sensor, I think that's really cool. Yeah, it totally sucks. It doesn't yeah. really work very well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We you know what I'm talking yeah, about because I got on my desk over there and it doesn't really work. Thing. Yeah. Um, I think it was awesome. Uh, oh, Spectre Symbol. Yeah, spe yeah. Spectre yeah. Symbol. Yeah. Yeah. What, th what thing? It was um, these guys. Oh, can you hand the microphone? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, uh, a company called Spectre Symbol came in to show us some of their gear, and uh, they had a flat, flexible speaker that mm. was kind of was about yay big ish. Uh, I can't remember. Was, mm. it was, was, it really, was yeah, that big? It was, it was I thought it was much smaller so, than that. Like yeah. soft and mm. flexible. And did you yeah. have to put a magnet on top of it or something? Nothing. something? No, uh, no, yeah, it was just yeah. this flat, flexible thing it's that they like held up, fabric. and it made yeah. music, and we're like, oh, it was so want, good. we want and that. Like, get in here, get in here, run in, and I'm like. What is this? Can I touch it? Can I bend it? <laughs> How much can I bend it? And they're like, less than that. Uh, <laughs> Don't break it. That's our one prototype. What are, what are the sites for your site you go to to get ideas from? Because a lot of people are always asking me for my RSS feeds, and I'm like, yeah. okay, like I have like 700 ones. feeds and limited. Yeah. So where, where, do you, always, where are you on that? Uh, uh, Mauser has a new products th yeah. list that I'll go through that. Um, Trying to think of what I, I got through like TI, like sometimes like TI or yeah. like like Do you ever, you ever see anything like Newark? Hackaday where like someone oh, yeah. might be coming up with something? Yep, uh, that's that's another thing. I you know I'll go through all the blogs and I mean it's it's twofold. I get to check out all these awesome projects that people are doing, but I get to see you know maybe there's a part in there that they could you know that they use that was pretty cool that others might benefit from ha us having that in stock and all. Gotcha. The so, problem is uh, that like what, the the way the cycles yeah. work is like somebody from Microchip will like come to us and be like, here's this awesome new like 3D sensor. And I'm like, great. And I'm like, where's the eval board? They're like, well, we'll have it in four months. And I'm like, yep. fucking email me in four months, man. Why are you talking yeah. to me right now? And then like, they'll give it to me four months later. And I'm like, great, I got the eval board, it works. When can I get chips? And they're like, eight months from now. And I'm like, yeah, go away, that's... man. Like, let me know when I can buy it now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next up, All Trevor. Right. Hi, my name is Trevor Zylstra. I am the Chief Operating Officer of SparkFun. I keep the lights on, keep things getting shipped out. Okay. So, so you, you do shipping management or like inventory management? Yes. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. So I, I have, oh, back I, yeah, I have a lot of uh, questions and we'll get into it later, but maybe we'll start <laughs> with you since we did the introductions. So SparkFun is, I think, one of the companies that everyone knows from the maker movement as like, you guys did a great job and got big. Like, well, thank you, you very know, much. Yeah, that's, that's what that's what they think. They're like, oh, you guys, you made it. You have 150 people. You remained open source. What have been what's been the the challenges running a company that gives away all the intellectual property? <laughs> what it, it, Wait, which it, which employee are you? Which number? Because you've you've also been around oh, yeah. for a while. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. So your Pete has priority over you when very it comes to so, like yeah. the donut in the, the collection. He gets <laughs> the, I'm trying to get your hands off my donut. <laughs> he gets first donut pick and you get yeah, like yeah. third donut yeah, pick. Yeah. So, and, and I guess to, <laughs> to, to have a little bit Chocolate of a follow coconut has coconut. it actually Chocolate been a challenge coconut. being an open source hardware company or that didn't matter at all? It's just com company challenge in general. Yeah, it, it certainly has mattered, but you know, I don't think the, the impact has been as significant as a lot of people think. Um, we've we've uh, had some success. Part of it's been luck. We've been in the right place at the right time. Um, and part of it has been the really fantastic people that we've hired. We have great people at SparkFun. Um, the open source part of it is uh, an occasional challenge. I mean, there are companies that have been um, making our products and including our logo on the, the boards, yeah. which is not really cool. It's happened to us too. Yeah, yeah. I know. And we've asked them to stop. And yeah. like, if they're in the US, it's easy. If they're not, it's hard. Yeah, yeah they don't yeah. really even answer your emails then. Yeah, or um, actually. It's like, that was not a real email address. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But you know, it's not something I'm going to lose sleep over. We, uh, we keep doing what we're doing. We iterate as fast as possible. We try to improve as much as possible. And uh, that's been a success. What's like the 
the, what you're most proud of is, is a, a process that you've introduced to Sparkfriend that wasn't there yet? Because you're all about process because you're ops. Yeah. So what's um, that, when you came in and you're like, man, you guys really don't know how to like recycle your paper towels. What is it that you came in <laughs> and you're like, you guys are doing it, not the wrong way, but the suboptimal way. I'm going to show you the optimal way. So we have a, a really fantastic group of directors. And um, I started our monthly directors meetings. I started our yearly strategy retreat. I, I did several things that I feel pretty proud of to get the directors all on the same page, working together, doing the same thing, uh, reduce siloing that happens in some companies. Um, I guess that's that's what I'm pretty proud. Yeah. Of. That's we, cool. We have a that's similar. Hard. Mm -hmm. We're uh, so Spark Fund is about 152 people. Mm -hmm. Adafruit's around 57, and we have similar things that we need to do. So because we're small, we do a state of the fruit meeting nice. every Friday. Yeah. State, state of the fruit. State of the fruit that's every awesome. Friday. And You're the like, idea is state of the Spark Fund next week. Yeah. <laughs> state of the Spark Fruit. Or the fruit fund. Yeah. 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 And so what we did is it's important because the directors that you have and when the company starts out eventually has staff and you have to ha start a culture. Exactly. And the silos are really dangerous for a company because mm -hmm. then you can't get products, you, the, the shipping folks aren't talking to production, mm -hmm. things don't work out and you see big companies kind of stumble over themselves trying to compete and it's great because we're all still kind of small compared to the like big, big companies, we're all tiny still too. There's exactly. like Mauser and uh, DigiKey, Arrow, yeah, these you are know, like two hundred billion dollar companies. If, Huge. If, if they made what we, any of us made, they'd jump out the window. They'd be like, <laughs> "Oh my God!" Like we make. The, so it's, it's. I think this culture piece that we're all building mm -hmm. is important. And one of the things that um, we found is what, what the culture you have inside is the culture that's on the outside too. So mm -hmm. in the open source. Um, hardware community, it's it's really neat. Everyone is always trying to improve their products. Do you have a, a, a history of getting uh, suggestions from uh, customers and integrating them? Oh, very them much in? so. Yeah. 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 So this is an open question, and I I knew the answer. Yes. yes. So, you know, we're the same thing. Customers always have the best ideas. Yeah. So this is really great. And then my other big question is, you guys are uh, kind of taking Spark Fun to the the next level soon. Um, Adafruit was an apartment, and now we're here at this Adafruit mm -hmm. factory. Mm -hmm. You've been in your location for a while, and now you're building an actual building. How we long, are. How long have you been in your location right now? Since July of 2006. And back then you had how many people? When we moved in... Approximately, like yeah, 20, 40... 38? 30, 40. Really? Yeah? I think 38, So about 40 people, so you've tripled in size, mm -hmm. or almost quadrupled in size, mm -hmm. to like 160, but you're still in the same building. That's right. We got really... This is a place we got lucky. Um, the company, when we moved in, we had only about two-thirds of the second floor, and a company that was in there um, before us slowly moved out, and we could expand into the building, and mm. it, it worked just perfectly for us. So right. we now have 99% of the building, and uh, we, it's, it, we're outgrowing it. So and 1% for that one. troll that lives under the bridge, but that's fine. <laughs> um, and how many square feet is the, the current building? 52,000. 52,000, yeah. a couple floors? Two floors. Two floors, yep. Okay. yep. So that you have the entire building. It's like your mm -hmm. building, but mm -hmm. you guys wasn't big enough? What, what is the thing that made mm -hmm. you think, like, can we need to build another building? It really was that it wasn't big enough, but now that we've gone through the design process for a new building and we've broken ground and there's a big pool of water in our future basement right now. <laughs> well, it's uh, like a free swimming pool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Except we'll need a permit from that Which from Boulder County. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. The sauna. In the, the to-do list was sauna a pool retreat. Anyways, yeah. So. Yeah. Swimming. yeah. But but the the initial consideration was the space, but now that we've gone through the design process, the fact that we can build this the way we want um, is going to make for a whole lot of efficiencies in a lot mm. of areas. It's it's way nicer to make something um, that you've designed rather than designing your company to fit a building. Can you give me an example of something that was like, wow, this is so great that we can now do X that we c couldn't do in the old building? Well, like we have a freight elevator now, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Freight when, elevator. When we first for moved into our building, we were only on the second floor. Our shipping department had uh, maybe 10, 11 foot ceilings, so we couldn't go very high. Uh, it was carpeted and wow. there was no okay. dock. We had to take everything up a normal non-freight elevator. Shipping in, shipping out, all came up this elevator. 
Um, when we got to expand into the entirety of our current building, when we got docks, that was a huge thing. Docks help so much. Yeah. So what is it about the new building? You have like more docks or what's the... All uh, docks. Not all docks. number. <laughs> all docks. Yeah, all day, all <laughs> all the, the first floor is docks. The yeah. docks. <laughs> um, part of it is just a big open area. Um, we have much higher ceilings, so we can put uh, two layers of pallets instead of just one. Uh, we have a definite problem with pallets right now because uh, we have adequate shelf space but inadequate pallet space. Because you can't stack them right we now. We can't stack them right yeah. now. And all your we stuff must come to. in now by pallet. Not all, but, but not like a lot uh, of it. Big way more than it used to. Yeah. yeah. Trevor, I think you should talk about when the decision got made between building a new building. Yeah, tell us about that. And getting two buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Why not two buildings? It's not discussed a lot, but I think that was a huge. Yeah. Why? Why didn't you? Yeah. Why didn't you just get another building? Yeah. Why not just? Yeah. Why not just build another building next to it or on top? Just build another yes. building on top, like a treehouse. Uh, because the culture is really important to us, and we already have uh, a divide between the people who walk the first floor and, and uh, they call themselves the cement walkers. Carpet, no, that's, it's concrete stompers. Concrete, concrete stompers. stompers, thank you. Man, you don't even know the Yes, culture. and the <laughs> second floor, <laughs> the yeah. second floor is the carpet walkers according to the people on the first floor. Yeah. So we already have this divide. No, we, we would really like to uh, reduce this separation. Do you feel like it's separation and not just like a tribalism? Uh, I think it's both. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so having a second building really increases that separation. Yeah. And, and I'm sure at some point in the company's uh, growth path, we will have to, but we're going to put that date off as far as That's possible. something that MakerBot had to do. They actually, in Brooklyn, it, it is not possible for, to, there's just, yeah. because you can't construct in yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah, they have executive headquarters and then like, you know. They have to split the company because they're like, well, we yeah. can't have a building that has enough space for all of our information workers as well as the manufacturing also the yeah. zoning is different yeah. mm -hmm. it gets very complicated in Brooklyn especially because you can't mm -hmm. build a suit you're yeah. like yeah. whatever's on the market is Here what we're we decided no walls mm -hmm. you know it yeah. Bath yeah. bathrooms have walls bathrooms yeah have the walls. bathroom <laughs> has walls <laughs> <laughs> and, but that's one of the things it was a cultural right. decision too because we want Let it's very a flat hierarchy anyone mm -hmm. in the company can improve the company mm -hmm. anyone can um, come up with things and anyone can do that. So my do you have cubicles or wall? Or what do you do? Have offices? What's your preferred? Yeah, some people have offices, yeah, some like people have plan, offices some but office. we're trying to actually reduce the offices. Uh, there's a much more open floor plan in the new building. Okay. Um, the reason we have some offices now is because that's the way the building was when we moved into it. And yeah, we had no. to build I mean, ourselves like, around the building. You're like, I'll totally tear down that wall one day and they don't. And how many square feet is your new building? 80,000. So 40,000 wow. per floor. 40,000. So it's about twice as big as your current location. Yeah, it's significantly bigger. When do you think it'll be finished as in like you're moved in, moved in? May 21st, 2014. Okay, so. Oh gosh, that's that very specific. That's, that's the what, what time? <laughs> Six, <laughs> three, oh, four p.m. I'm sure there's going to be delays, but that's the yeah. date that the current schedule shows. Yeah, okay. we had a, a, a Planet Earth gets back at people issue last year, Sandy, mm -hmm. and you just had the flood. Was mm -hmm. uh, everyone okay in your area? by the way, because I'm sure a lot of people want to know because you're in Colorado. Yeah, absolutely. Um, certainly not everybody in Colorado is okay. There were some deaths and, and I think there's still some people missing. Yeah. But as far as Spark, and, Spark Fund employees, everybody's happy and healthy. Uh, several people have been displaced from where they live, but everybody is healthy, yeah. so yeah. we're You guys have like wildfires good. and yeah, floods. 10% ten, ten yeah. off on Monday. That's right. 10% yeah. off on Monday, Monday. You've met, you're matching, well no, you're giving 10% of the sales to... Um, to flood the, relief, and we're also, that money is also being matched by uh, a company called Elevations Credit Union that we have uh, some of our insurance through. Oh, great. Right. Taking employee donations too. And employee Spark donations. Funds matching the employee donations and then Elevations matching. Wow. Just give your money already, yeah. guys. So, to, so if you're affected by the flood okay. or if you care and you want to get electronics and mm -hmm. <laughs> donate, that's an excellent Monday thing. We is did a the great same day, thing yep. right after Sandy. Hold on to your money till Monday. There was a lot of areas uh, hit pretty hard. So my next question, and you guys can figure out who the best person to answer is. Um, so Sparkfund did a really cool thing. Uh, I always like it when companies do stuff that is just like, wow, we would never do that. That is awesome. Whoa, go, go, go. A national tour. You got an RV, mm -hmm. and you like wrapped it with like the Sparkfund stuff, and you had this map, and you did all this stuff. Who, who could talk about the national tour? I think tour? Dia might be the best person for this. Dia's like, wait, did what? Did nobody what? here go on the tour? No. 
Wow. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, I, I don't know a lot about the tour. I haven't done the tour. Um, they had a sign-up sheet, and I was like, ooh, I could live in an RV for, like, two weeks with people I didn't get to pick. <laughs> no. <laughs> So what, what, for the folks who don't know what the Spark Fun nationwide tour is, uh, what sure. is it? Sure. Um, so it's, employees are kind of rotating in and out, and some of the young people that still think that sounds fun get in an RV, and they... Um, it's like Burning Man. Come on. <laughs> oh, God. It probably smells worse. Cheaper. <laughs> um, it's a dry heat. Yeah. And tour <laughs> city to city and visit... Um, Anywhere that really wants to do classes, so we take a bunch of um, lab packs, and basically, I think for the the price of the lab pack, you can have that and the visit and all the instructors, and we teach classes um, really like anywhere: hacker spaces, libraries, schools, um, anywhere that'll have us. And that has been, I think, a really amazing outreach experience. Uh, in, in, I mean, in addition to, to being great anytime we get a really good education opportunity, it's a way for anybody in the company to get out there and like really interact with the people that we're serving and, and get a taste of why we're doing this. It's really important. And it doesn't matter what you're doing at the company. It's you know? so different than like answering an email or even putting form. You're like, yeah. oh, People actually have difficulty with this thing that they never mention. Okay, I have to add that yeah. to my documentation, improve the tutorials. Yeah, teach, it doesn't matter better. what you do at SparkFun. You're answering the tech support calls, your customer service, you're shipping the boxes, you're receiving the products, any of that. You get to go out and talk to the customers and see kids just like light up because they made this thing light up. And, yeah. um, and that is a really extraordinary opportunity. We used to get that at the Maker Faire booth where um, we would send just like a ton of people out and everyone would teach kids how to solder. And that, that was a really great feeling. And well, the I national tour is how we do that yeah. now. Yeah. But some people can't make it to Maker Faire. I mean, Maker yeah. Faire is, yeah. There's, there's I mean, Maker Faire is great, but it is, it's kind of a saturated area. Like, it is. You know, you want to get to people in, in Kansas and Ohio and mm -hmm. Florida and Texas, not just yeah. people who live there's in the middle of like Silicon Valley. Watch, <laughs> yeah, we've got yeah. one coming up in North Colorado. Yeah. In fact, someone yeah, said, thank you for sponsoring the Nashville, uh, Tennessee Mini Maker Faire today, SparkFun. I guess oh, you guys were a sponsor. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah. We love you. Yeah. yeah, Tennessee. So if people wanted to find out more, is there any more legs of the tour, or is it winding down? I don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I should yeah. know yeah. that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so oh, there's got to be, because Nick was Sparkfun. about to go, and it's definitely, I think they're doing East Coast now, and they will continue to be doing East Coast, because I think they're going through Atlanta. It will continue at least through the end of 2013. Wow. Okay. Until the end That's of 2013. That's a lot of RVing. Wow. Yeah. I can tell that Trevor pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I <laughs> know so much because you guys I get have. <laughs> you have to do it. So, all right. I want to switch gears a little bit, Pete. This one's going to be on you. So, sir, sure. lots of processor choices out there in the maker world. There's PIC. There's ABR. Atmos, there's, there's the, embed. Yeah. There's ARM cores. There's we, and, and we we try to have all of them here at Adafruit. But which one do you like? To work with. What's your and, like? And personally, per personally, and then also as you're like, who I wanna, a bunch of I want to go home and drink a cup of tea and curl by the fire and write yeah. code in. That doesn't happen. <laughs> um, well, okay, let, let me let me yeah. let me qualify. No, well, hold, hold on, let me qualify that. Um, if you if you had to teach your kids one programming language for the coming revolution, what would it see, be? No, well, no, I teach know, them what, C. What, what, um, but uh, the truth of the matter is, I know just enough code to be dangerous and ooh. awful. I'm actually much more of an analog okay. design guy. Okay. Gotcha. So, like. if you um, uh, did you cry when National was purchased by TI? <laughs> <laughs> Tears? <laughs> really? Not a single one. Wow. So wait, so uh, for, an like screw for analog here. stuff, what type of things do you like to tinker with? Um, my my uh, my pet thing is tubes. Tubes, like tubes. tube amps, and yeah. stuff. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. But I got a few projects. Did you do synthesizers too? We have a couple synth people here. I've always wanted to play yeah. with with some more analog synthesizers, but I've never done one. If you ever want to like make a synthesizer but never feel the need to actually make music, you should definitely go into modulars because like. They're fun to make, and then like you have to make like so many to actually get any audio out. Yeah, that it's I like you're like, oh, I can't make any music. I have six months left because I have to do like seven more modules. <laughs> I guess um, eh, I may do one one day. Okay. And what is the next uh, Mass Pete episode coming up? Can you give us a little bit of a preview of what uh, you're going to be doing? You know, I don't. Um, I was thinking. Do you just wake up in the morning and think of that day? I was. <laughs> I was thinking. I was thinking about an addendum to the last one, or uh, an addition, um, because there were some people with some uh, follow-up questions about PCB design that mm. I thought I might 
it might be useful mm -hmm. to go in depth on. Um, some logic stuff, I think. Uh, there's a few uh, logic things that I haven't addressed very well. Um, but generally, uh, I don't really start thinking about them until about a couple of weeks before I have yeah. to start. So whatever it's in your mind, it's time. You're like, I yeah. just kind of like play fun stuff around. Yeah, well, we have a queue, and I do go to the queue uh, quite frequently. Um, but um, a lot of the more popular videos tend to be the ones that focus on logic and programming and mm. all of my weak points. Aww. So it's kind of good that but I, get, good. These, get, I to get to research, research it. Them, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because well, I don't want to get up and start saying yeah. things. That's as why you learn stuff is you're forced do, do, do. to teach it. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Right. So I got to do my due diligence and make sure that I don't say anything stupid. Yeah, the YouTube really stupid. comments, they'll let you know. They do. Don't, don't read the comments. And then don't read the comments. I have to. I'm really weak about this. Don't read the comments. Don't read the comments. If, if yeah. somebody's got like legitimate criticism, I need to yeah. take that to heart. Um, if I think people just critique being, like they're like, oh, like you have 90 degree angles in your PCB design. And I'm like, this isn't the 60s, guys. It doesn't <laughs> matter anymore. There are times when you like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the first comment on my first video was like, She's hotter than Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know what Robert looks like. like. No, she isn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. It is a challenge when when you have a new audience out there, mm -hmm. and it's not your core audience that's into Spark Fun or into Adafruit. They they're just drive by, and they're just like it's hot or not. It's not like it's yeah. something. So you have to. But it's cool because sometimes if you just get one of them, and they get interested in electronics. I mean, this is why we put everyone puts their then stuff you on win. YouTube. It's like yeah. it's a, yeah. casting a wider net. Um, and speaking of that, I have a question for Pierce. So sure. here's your question. So okay. since you're in the technology research thing, mm -hmm. where do you think the, the trends are going for stuff that companies like SparkFun and, and Adafruit um, are? What's the uh, future? Yeah, what, do you, what are you starting yeah. to see? Tell us the future. There? I mean, uh, the, the pretty obvious one is single board computers. Uh, okay. There's some wacky Raspberry stuff. Raspberry Pi, yeah. Beagle Bones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, uh, obviously, e textiles is another big one. Wearables, um, yeah. Uh, Goatee. Goatee. Uh, are you starting to see a demand for the uh, outcomes of successful Kickstarters? Like it worked out, and then like now they have product products. Yep. You know, yeah, yeah. That's I, I get a lot of emails of requests of uh, Kickstarters. Uh, you know, we, we just did this Kickstarter. We we need manufacturing now. Do you think you guys can do that? <laughs> Um, the th things along those lines. It's uh, we, we we've had uh, you know uh, rough situations involving Kickstarters uh, and uh, dealing with uh, Kickstarters like that. Totally attract a significant other that's yeah. also a little bit crazy, but like really yeah. good in bed, but like really crazy. Exactly. And like, oh, like, it looks great. But looks great, but like you just gotta be real yeah. careful. Yeah, set of boundaries. Yeah. We had to decide as a company that we're not going to do like contract manufacturing for Kickstarters. And uh -huh. We really didn't want to um, uh, be part of something that there's really no control over. We can't provide yeah. good customer service. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of decisions that people make for a Kickstarter, which is like a pre-sale idea. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets to manufacturing, it's all wrong. Yeah. And they're like, well, you know, couldn't you work with us? Can you do something? We're like, we really we want to meet our customers' expectations, also yours. We're just we don't we don't do that. I think there's some companies that are trying to serve that market. You see, like a Kickstarter is almost a uh, a a prequel to venture funding. Yeah. We also see like yeah. Kickstarter of like fulfillment houses starting to, starting to pop up. So they'll do fulfillment, mm -hmm. they'll do your T-shirts, your stickers, and stuff, which is really good yeah. because it's. Yeah. Hard to even do stickers and yeah. t-shirts right. Like harder than people think, right? To get it the way you want it. Mm -hmm. So like doing custom hardware is like oh, yeah. so even my, tougher. My next question is for Trevor. Like speaking of like venture funding, so you know there was no Kickstarter Indiegogo. No. We all started right, <laughs> and if there was, it may have changed the nature of our companies. Maybe mm -hmm. we have. Maybe the rotary phone would have been a Kickstarter, and like that would have been it. You know, like maybe the Minty Boost at Lamar did. Maybe that would have been a Kickstarter. Why? Uh, I guess you don't have to answer if you can, but why doesn't SparkFun get venture funding and go public and do all these things? I mean, I can tell you why Adafruit does, but I was... Sure. Uh, well, we are fortunate that venture capitalists are calling us all the time offering money, and so far we've been in the very fortunate position uh, to be able to say no to them. And, and the primary reason that we say no is because we like our autonomy. We like to be able to do risky things and not have a board telling us, uh, you know, that was really stupid. Um, we like to be able to do things that most businesses don't do, you know, lay out 
the detailed costs of building a new building was a blog post, for example. Yeah. And um, that's investors would freak. pretty rare. Yeah, yeah investors like, would freak. Why are you telling everybody this? Exactly. Yeah. And so we don't have those investors to tell us, no, we go ahead and do the stupid stuff because we want to. Yeah, Lamar and I are in the same boat. Like, we took on Microsoft. We said we want to hack the Kinect and get it out there. And the results, you know, they speak for themselves now. There's all sorts of Kinect art, and everyone did everything. If we had taken funding, they would have fired us because we took on Microsoft. It had nothing to do with our product lineup. So you, don't, you don't sell anything involved here. Why are you wasting yeah. two weeks of your time on this, and, you know, like hacker thing that might be even be illegal? Yeah. And like, are you going to get arrested? And, and things yeah, like, but it makes you know, the world a better place. Our, yeah, our, our kids show the same thing. So with that being said, you know, the educational market is tough. It's schools. Schools are not known to have tons of money. Like maybe in the long term, because they have. You know they're they're funded by the government, but you know it's tough. These are long sales cycles and stuff like that. Do you consider the education market the 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 place where there's lots of profits or where there's lots of work to be done? Or how do you see the education market as a as a company that that does have a lot of hooks into education now? We think that teaching people how to do this stuff is the coolest thing that we could possibly do. It is personally satisfying. It makes the world a better place. Um, it also has the great side effect that it can possibly sell more stuff. That's secondary, but it's not ignored. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we do it because we think it's the right thing to do, and, and it's personally really satisfying. Yeah. So when you're looking at your yearly, because we do the same thing, we always make choices like, well, we want to devote this much to you know, wearables as a new thing for us. We want to do this much in, in education. Do you try to, in your yearly strategy, do you try to like figure out like what's an important thing for the year for the, the company as a cause? It's like year of the and dragon. Then, and then what are, what's, a, what's important for the company as a business? Because sometimes they don't necessarily match up. I think mm -hmm. if you do a good job, mm -hmm. they do. That's why open source hardware is cool, because you can be a cause and a business if you do it right. But sometimes, you know, you just want to just get software out there, hardware out there. Do you, Absolutely. Do you do those things as well? Yes. Those, those things are always discussed uh, in, in great detail at the strategy retreats. And uh, uh, both things are always in mind. I can't ask you about these strategy retreats because I know what you're going to say. But now, now I'm really, I'm now I'm really curious. Yeah. I guess we'll probably the have to do strategy. Their, their retreats are much different than our retreats. Oh, <laughs> <I see. laughs> so These are the fun yeah. retreats, then, yeah. boring <laughs> retreats. The director of strategy retreats are intense. Yeah. Intense, yeah. not yeah. fun. You guys are fun. Yeah. Okay. They can be fun. Um, okay. And there, there are certainly fun moments, but it's. I'm sorry. Uh, there are certainly fun moments, but they, they have to look at like profit and loss intense. statements. You guys mm -hmm. just like drinking beer. What, 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 what's this? You guys? I'm a director. <laughs> oh, you have. Oh, you're not. You have to go to the director and, and the engineering retreats. Yes. Yes. Oh. And it's a burden. I can tell you. Okay. No, it's not a burden. Mark um, retreat right now. Marcom is on a retreat right now. Marcom, um, marketing, and, and so they're, marketing, okay, yes. so they have, everyone's got their own retreat. And because I've actually never been on a retreat, so I'm, I'm only asking because like I've only seen these on like in movies and stuff. Is it like more than like, <laughs> is it like a day or two or is it like a week? Is it like an hour? It's, it's like a few days. Like for example. It's a few days. You uh, go out and you're like, like two, like yeah. two camping? days. Yeah, we just did yeah. a weekend in Grand Lake. Yeah. yeah. Do you have like we, a cabin or you're like in tents? We have six cabins. You have cabins. We, okay. We so found like, we found a place that rented cabins really cheap, okay, and we took good. the entire engineering department. I, I've been yeah. on these, and I find they're really helpful. As, yeah. And as long as you have like a team that they they set up the goals and what we want to do, and you you intersperse it with stuff that's fun, yeah. that you're that right. helps people figure out how each other think. Yeah. That's yes. one of the things. And it's not always a retreat. Sometimes you just go out and just like. Last year, um, we, we didn't do a retreat. We just uh, took a party bus down to Denver and screen printed together. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Fun. Don't then, screen print drunk. You get ink everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Registration's well, really hard. And, and when did you have to start doing these? Like, what was the level of company? Because we always get asked, like, well, when did you guys need to, like, move out of your apartment? When did you need to get, like, a COO? When did you need to get insurance? When did you need to get trademark lawyers? When did you guys start saying we should go away and do strategy and retreats? Do you know what the... Probably a couple of years 2010? ago. 2010? 2010. And I think it was Marcom right. that started it, wasn't yeah. it? No, no, no. I started it. You started oh. it. Oh, Trevor something started else that Trevor it. started. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice work. So Tell us Thanks. about why you, why you started these retreats. They're your idea. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because, because it was obvious that uh, when the directors didn't 
have a meeting of the minds, everybody was moving in their own direction. Mm -hmm. And the retreat allowed us to hash out uh, which direction we should all be moving in. And how many directors do you have? Nine, including Nate. Wow, that's right. a lot of directors. So this is really helpful, because one of the things that um, I don't get to do anymore, which I wish I did, uh, I had time, but I'm helping Lamar run Adafruit, is get the knowledge out about running a maker business. I think we all did a pretty good job of putting stuff on GitHub and like getting our software out, and I think people are becoming good engineers or starting to do good software or good wearables or good, all the things that we, that we do is shipping stuff, but how to actually run a business is, is different, and everyone wants to be a business. There was a Hardware Innovation Summit. You guys went to Maker Fair uh, today. I was actually gonna, my next round of questions is like, what did you say Maker Fair? But everyone wants to be a maker business now, and we tried, we can't scale our advice people and, and we're at a certain size and you guys are in the same boat it's there's 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 just not enough time so thank you for sharing some of the things that you did to oh to our build, great pleasure build the, the company because we get asked quite a bit when I used to write these articles I'd say well here's what we'd use as a shipping station and that was like the most valuable thing like oh wow finally I'll just go and get you know using Disha okay that's a cool thing you know here's the payment processor that we use that was all that was all interesting so uh, starting with you uh, what did you see at Maker Faire today because that's why you're here you guys went and we yeah, didn't what did, what did you, you see that was interesting um, I ran into somebody I had been talking to for a while, uh, Faye Shaw, who uh, started her own company, Bitwise E-Textiles, oh, yeah. and she is doing some really fun grassroots kits that um, are super simple, really good learning tools, and um, it was really cool to see her out doing that and uh, doing cool work. Um, also ran into Fawn that we met at Olin. Fawn? She, yeah, okay. Fawn. Um, she works with Amon Milner, Milner um, and, and she's doing some really neat stuff. She's doing some fun educational stuff. It's, um, I wish I could say I was seeing a lot of really new stuff at Maker Faire this year, but it's not. I'm seeing a lot of old friends doing cool new stuff, that's and good. that's still that's still so valuable. Yeah. I like yeah. seeing people you to catch up with stick people. around and, and see what, what they're doing What are you doing, doing this now. year? What's, yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Okay, what did you say? Uh, well, I spent a lot of time catching up with old contacts. Uh, saw Kip, saw Sophie Kravitz, uh, saw Bunny. Um, as yeah, far physical social network for maker company. I know, right? It's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, all these people that we have like relationships with. Yeah. Like, hey, you see them on Twitter, and like, here still look like your icon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of 3D printers, man. Um, yeah. I, I might be the only guy in the world to say this, but. I I don't I don't have a lot of cause myself for a 3D printer. They're cool. They do a lot yeah. of things, but uh, when it comes right down to it, I want to build a circuit from scratch with yeah. parts. Yeah. We finally like, started you know. using one. We got one in our apartment because we were uh, working on a case. We're so, doing injection molding. So we would it's handy it, if you're doing injection molding. I, yes, I, and absolutely. It takes forever to go back and forth, but it also takes forever to print. So I'd wake up in the morning at five, not wake up her. Start to print it out. By the time she wakes up, the closure would be done. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then we'd send I want the I want the slot to be one yeah. millimeter wider. You so. know, and then okay, here's the next version, and then print that one out. Right. And do like here's, ten what times. Did you see? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Before, yeah, I just more. wanted to say like oh, yeah. out loud for everybody to hear this. I am totally impressed with these guys and how much they put into this business. So. Oh, oh, thank you guys you. rock. Yeah, There's we couldn't make it to like Maker Fairs. We're like, oh, we gotta get everything ready for the show. No, we rarely see you at Maker Fairs. Well, we're gonna maybe go tomorrow. We'll see. We can make it out. So, well, thank you. That was. Take the train. Right. Uh, I, I don't get out to the Maker Faires too much, so I was impressed with a lot of stuff. And I, I do like 3D printers and things like that. So um, you take his. Was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it, it actually it's, it, it was incredibly simple. But my favorite thing, and I, I think I'm going to butcher the company name. It's a company called Solder Sunday, uh -huh. I believe. And they had basically it was an LED throwy, but in like a with a parachute, like the old parachute men. Yeah. And I, I, that sounds like it, fun. It was, yeah, it was. Whee! It really exciting for me. I immediately bought four. Okay. okay. And Trevor, did you see something interesting at Maker Faire today? Uh, I did. Um, and the things that impressed me most at Maker Faire this year were the projects that people bought, uh, brought. There were some great uh, musical instruments made from found pieces of old copper and garbage and stuff like that that were fantastic. They were beautiful and they were making great music on it. There were some great um, e-textile designs. Uh, some stuff using thermochromatic ink that was very interesting. Uh, I, I thought there were some fantastic projects that makers brought this year. Okay. 
All right. So I'm going to open it up for um, questions from the audience. Uh, the audience, because we have about 10, 15 minutes or so. And one of the questions, because um, they were posting questions during the whole thing, but I'm going to try to uh, uh, go back and see if I can find some of them. Um, oh, how many of the uh, directors or engineers someone wanted to know? And whoever knows the answers to this can, can grab the mic quickly. The one director. Uh, that'd well, be I'm an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> me. No, uh, yeah, me and Nate. Okay. okay. All right. And what are the, just, just quickly while they're getting more questions, what are the other engineer uh, director names and what do they direct? Oh, jeez. Well, there's uh, only nine of them. I'm a, I know. I always oh, screw this up. Bad. Okay, well, there's you. We, 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 have, finish. we have we have these uh, catch-up meetings every Thursday, right? And, like, the door will close, and then we all kind of look around and go, like, all right, who are we missing? Uh, right? I mean, it's like, we don't know who's missing. There's so many of us. Okay, well, name as many as you can. Wait, um, wait, wait. Okay, so uh, thank you. Lindsay Levkoff, she's director of education. Okay. Chris Clark is director of IT. What? Jordan Haney, do this. <laughs> no, this is you. No, no, you're doing I'm not a director. Jordan Haney, uh, director of uh, inventory. If you make her a director, then she can finish this. Hey. You. <laughs> okay, so you direct, director of education, director, director of inventory, uh, director of uh, IT. Uh, director of uh, uh, Rich Parker, director of finance. Director of finance. Um, Trevor. Guys. Trevor. Uh, chief operating chief officer. Operating director officer. of operations. Uh, myself, director of engineering. Engineering. Uh, seven is, who am I forgetting? They're going to slip my throat. Matt Bolton. Matt Bolton, director of production. Matt Bolton, director of production. And, no, there's yeah. Nate, but he, there's one other. Uh, that was we're missing seven. A you, you didn't count oh, yourself. Oh, because we don't I did have count a Marcom myself. director right now. Oh, because we're minus a Marcom director right now. Are you looking for one? We are. Okay, so everyone, if you want to work if for a company in Colorado. If you are marketing director, yeah. want to be. Jobs at Spark Fund, yeah. Okay. We find lots of people. You have to give us 500 bucks though for yeah, that. Yeah, we want to raise money. Referral fee. <laughs> uh, store credit. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to um, post on the Adafruit Jobs Board, you can post. Uh, yeah, no, it's <laughs> yeah. I want to make a song about what kind of Marcom director we need, like from Mary Poppins. Okay. All right. I want that song. Coming soon. <laughs> and each director okay. manages like 20, 30 people or something? 20 people? Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think the biggest one is probably Matt, and he's got. He's got but which one's ah, Matt? Well, oh, that's right, because you cover. Customer service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You do cover quite a few. Okay. Uh, next, okay. Next up, um, someone wants to look for potentiometers as small as the one in servos. Do you know where I can find them? Digikey doesn't have them. I, I, I didn't hear that. The potentiometers um, that are the same size as the ones inside of servos. Um, they looked on Digikey, but they couldn't find them. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, I don't think we've ever tried to source one that's exactly that size. Okay. That's tough. Um, Ready, set, go. <laughs> do like sur surplus websites and stuff like that. Might yeah. have something like surplus that. sites. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Check out your Jamco's, your MPJs, exactly. your. Uh, All right. Uh, next up, uh, Sparkfun had a contest for flexible circuits. Uh, is there any updates with it? Oh yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, that was one that we did uh, in 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 sort of concert with Spectra Symbol. They came out and uh, they looked over some of our ideas. Um, the idea that had the most legs and the most likely flexi legs, yeah. flexi legs, uh, would be the um, flexible LED matrix. Um, the problem we're running into with that is that um, the traces, the conductive material, uh, does not carry that much current without a loss, right? Yeah. And so it's like, uh, how are we going to do this? So we we were trying to figure out how much current we need, and how we need to distribute it in order to get it to work. Okay. Um, that's still in the works. And then there was the other one that was um, the the book of circuits, yeah. right? And that one may actually come to fruition, uh, although it's it's a real kind of kitschy sort of book product. Of It'd be really cool. What's a book so, of circuits? So like the idea was um, to have like this binder, right? And yeah, each page is, yeah, like a loose leaf thing. So like in the binder you have like uh, a driving circuit like an Arduino with mm -hmm. LED drivers or what have you. And then each page is like a different educational circuit, like a 555. Made out of flex material? Make it, made oh, out of flex material. Okay. Um, so that was kind of a cool idea. Okay. Uh, next up, for SparkFun, do you plan on using uh, postal service as a shipping method, USPS? 
Oh, yes. Uh, that's a very, very popular uh, shipping method for us. Okay. It always has been. OK. Maybe this person didn't look at the different shipping options. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have international uh, mm -hmm. first class express? Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. 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 Same with Avery. Yeah. Okay. Whoever that is, you should look Check at your again. shipping options. Yeah. Maybe you didn't type in your address. Yeah. Right. Uh, next up, what was the motivation for Free Day, and do you think it's been successful? So the original idea was based on Chris Anderson's book uh, uh, called Free. And we wanted to figure out a way to make hardware free. And we obviously can't continue to be a business that needs to make money and give everything away for free. But we wanted to do it for a day. So the original idea was to keep the program very simple. We would put a maximum amount, which the very first year was $100,000. And we would just uh, give everything that people ordered up to that $100,000 limit for free that day. And that first year, our servers were not really ready for that kind of onslaught. And so it ground the Spark Fund servers to uh, an absolute halt. But we did eventually give away $100,000 worth of free stuff. Mm. Right. OK, next up. Um, I think I know the answer to this question. Um, it's OK, so I'm asking. Because uh, you guys post your stuff. What, uh, if, we're, if we're willing to share and you're willing to share, what are the 2012 revenues for these two open source companies? 2012. Yeah, last year. 28 and 28 and a half. Yeah, it's 28. I mean, yeah. I, we, we look. I mean, you post yeah. about okay. it, and it's like, oh, look, SparkFun's oh, 28. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're a 10. Well, 2012, okay. we're a 10. And year over to year, right now, we're going through, I would say, a similar growth curve that SparkFun mm -hmm. had around that zone. So we're tripling. So this Congratulations. Year, That's yeah, really fantastic. Two, yeah, it's uh, a and little space, success equals panic really when it's at this. So we're in the midst of tripling. It's not sustainable, but 216% growth this year. Congratulations. We'll see what happens. It kind of hurts. Um, and we need to get more space. Um, when we were giving them the tour, we are like, you know, we're getting more space in this building. And one day, we will need to get mm -hmm. a building. So that's where we're at right now. And I think one of the things when I used to catalog all the open source hardware companies and how they were doing, the, it, it kept going up and up. And so I hope there's other people out there that look at these two companies with a combined market share of whatever this is, just us. It's like, that's pretty healthy. That's neat. Mm -hmm. they should, uh, there's, people should trust doing open source hardware. Yeah. We'd like to see Agreed. that. Agreed, yes. And, and we pay healthcare. You guys do healthcare. You mm -hmm. get 401ks. You got dogs in the office. You got retreats. You got buildings. Like these are crazy retreats. This is not. This is not. This skateboards. Is, yeah, skateboards. We have name brand soda now. Like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> right? We, you know. You know you've arrived. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor Zeppa. Yeah. So, so the 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 idea that these things can work. No out. No more RC cola for you. Yeah. The idea that things can work out. Um, it, it's true. Uh, all right. Next up. Uh, get this. Um, is SparkFun or Adafruit working on an updated um, uh, music shield? I've got an I've been working on Yeah, one. we have one that we're working on. We have an MP3 shield, so. I have a updated shield. wave shield, too. We have a wave yeah, shield. Yeah, wave shield. We, we do have uh, an updated uh, uh, wave trigger. Um, I'm trying to think. I know all, all, all the engineers are watching this going, Pete, Pete, why can't you think of <laughs> My thing, my thing, X. my thing. <laughs> that thing I'm working remember. on. They're okay. not watching it. Um, but we do have a couple. Of, no, they're watching. Um, we we do have a couple. Because if their boss is on, this show. Um, no, because because Sean sent out an email to yeah, the group a little while ago. So hey, check everybody out. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Not me. Um, next up, uh, if we're willing to share, and we'll we'll do this one. Sure. Uh, is uh, what is a planned product from Adafruit and what is a planned product from SparkFun? Uh, we're doing a, a Bluetooth product called Bluetooth. Bluefruit. We'll be Bluefruit. releasing ne next week. I FCC built the tester. Certified. FCC certified. Lamar <laughs> just built the the, I the, the tester. The, wrote the firmware, the tester, and it's done and it's complicated. So it's that's, only two and a half years in the making. That's our. It's not out yet. You can't ask questions, but that's one of our upcoming products. Yeah, you, you try got, talking to CSR. See if they call you back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, with regard to Bluetooth, we have. Um, it doesn't have to be Bluetooth. It can be anything. Yeah, it can be anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, no, this is, this is just the first one that came to mind. Um, but uh, if you have 
was it? Uh, I, I have plenty of stuff I can mention. Oh, rock this. Yeah, place. just yeah, but, all right, pick absolutely. one because we right. only yeah. pick one. Pick one. Here. No. <laughs> uh, so the the big one. It, it's not one that we're developing per se, but we're uh, we we've come to an agreement with a company called Orion Technologies, and it's a product called Elastolite, and it's a super flexible EL panel that's got oh, a cool. waterproof coating. Oh, that's cool. And yeah, oh. Uh, oh, it's that's actually nice. the uh, same uh, material they used to make the costumes in the movie Tron. Oh, cool. Oh, so that's going to be uh, that's what those really guys exciting. Are up to. Yeah. They're almost yep. done with their Disney royalties. Yeah. <laughs> How neat. So it's just like, it's it's like somehow it's, 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 uh, the EL ink is on like a rubber sheet. Yeah. And exactly. then it's just protected. So can you cut it? Uh, not really. I mean, potentially you immediately lose the waterproofness yeah. of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it comes in like set shapes, like circle yeah. and like line and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, next up, uh, PTU. Is that going to be ready by Halloween so people can use it? Yeah, we're, okay. we're pushing for it. All right. Uh, Pete, do you, do you skateboard? Is that true? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet that came from <laughs> you. You answer honestly. honestly. No. Okay. Sure. I'll lie. Um, yes. I, I mean, we'll leave off uh, part of the question. I just moderated. Uh, I just want to know if you skateboard. Okay, great. Yeah. I skateboard. Is, that, <laughs> is there Okay. Oh, I do. Yeah, I, I do yeah, I'm a skater. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of okay. Um, next up, what um, Spark Fun products are considered um, uh, successful in your in your minds? What, what products do you do you like? Let's uh, just all say the SIK. SIK. Okay. The, the SIK blows. So the Spark most Fun Inventor Kit, the uh, the Arduino yeah. pack yeah. and experiments and all that. Okay. Yeah. That's your yeah, thing. That's turned out really well. Okay. Uh, next up on the questions. Uh, what is the name of the board that multiplies with multiple magnets that can be placed on? Wait. The Arduino will be able to tell how many magnets are placed on the device with calibration. It sounds like a Hall Effect sensor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up. Uh, oh, I can take this one. I can get this one. Do you know of any fully open source computers plan or plans to make one, including the processors, input, output connections? Yeah, Bunny Wang is working on an open source laptop. Um, we just had dinner with Bunny on. Tuesday, and he was talking about all the challenges of making a completely open source hardware laptop. The chip itself is not open source. Yeah. It has an FPGA, though, so you could design your own yeah. completely open source chip. Yeah, Bunny was one of the pioneers that we all looked at. He was always releasing everything and putting Gerbers up and saying, here's, here's an open source. And uh, one of the things I like about open source, and you guys probably run into the same thing, is yeah, you know, we put up Eagle files. It's not KiCad or Gita yet. There isn't the, you know, d engineers and designers, they, they like to use their tools, but the idea, you're putting the files up, I think, is the, 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 the goal. And so some of Bunny stuff, it's not going to be completely open source because the, the chip makers make you sign an NDA. I mean, maybe he, he, can, he does stuff in, like, Protel and Altium. Yeah, yeah, he puts up an Altium files, like, okay, like, I, <laughs> okay, what are we going to do with these things? I don't have that. So, yeah, so that's one of the things I, I like that SparkFun did with your site is it, it has really clear little icons that you can download the, the stuff and has GitHub and, and all that. We put our we have our stuff on GitHub. You guys have your stuff on GitHub. It's kind of fun to explore GitHub as it turns into uh, the GitHub for hardware. Everyone's like, oh, we're gonna have a company that does the hardware for GitHub or GitHub for hardware. Turns out GitHub might be the GitHub. The for GitHub, hardware. yeah. 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 The, there was a really cool 3D um, tool now that shows revisions between 3D prints. So we're getting really close to maybe circuit boards on that. So uh, I guess I'll just I'll do a follow up on this. What um. Uh, what is the reason that you guys use Eagle? That's because what they know, or um, the the main reason is because they have a free version that everybody can access, um, right? If you get if you download Eagle Lite or whatever they're calling it these days, um, you have at least two layers you can work with and ten by ten centimeters, and you don't have to pay anything. And the vast majority of our designs fall within those parameters, so. If you're willing to get through a learning curve, you're you're running. You are up and running. And of course, you know the, the upshot is that of that is half the people are stealing the designs and putting them up on uh, their websites. So, okay. yeah. all right, we're, um, we're now out of time. Uh, thank you so much. This was fantastic. A historic yeah, Ask an Engineer. <laughs> this is actually the most visitors we've had. They said it could never happen. <laughs> it's happened. Oh, it's <laughs> happened. <laughs> Yeah. So um, this is the time of the night where I remind everybody the code is SparkFun, 10% off everything in the Adafruit store. That's in stock. Expires tonight at midnight. Um, so for a prize, we normally give away something 
from Adafruit, but I thought it'd be neat if you don't mind. Uh, Twenty-five dollar gift certificate from SparkFun and twenty-five from Adafruit. Is that cool? That's cool. Okay. Really cool. So the trivia question is: What uh, first person to type it in the chat here? What is the uh, Adafruit product that is available on the SparkFun store? There's only one. There's one. It's a very one. special one. There will be more. Yeah. <laughs> There's a very special one. one. And you could use a gift certificate to get that there. So oh, yeah. There you go. No. That's a tough one. So it's tough because you know we our community they kind of have everything. So oh, I thought a gift certificate. So or let's like see. Feverish, yeah. Like well, right there's right. a little bit of a yeah. Well, there's a <laughs> yeah, delay between the live. There's yeah. a delay between YouTube and UStream, and so whoever types it in fast, so they're they're probably going to the the SparkFun site. Maybe they're typing Adafruit. Maybe they're um, oh, here we go. Okay. The yeah. winner oh is oh Adam Sind. Minty Boost. Adam Sind, yeah. you're the winner. Minty Boost. Nice. nice job. And here's a trivia question for you guys. I know you're not going to get it, but do you, do you know the product ID on SparkFun? Oh, yeah. man. Ooh, I, don't even know. I don't even know. No, I know. There's, yeah. there are certain product IDs I remember mm -hmm. at Adafruit. Yeah, we know some of the IDs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 66. Like, uh, unfortunately, yeah. 666 is the drone badge. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't plan it out, and they're like, see? And I'm like, no, it was. Every skew I know is a battery. Yes. Six 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 was Arduino for the longest time. Right? See, this is, yeah. and you don't mean to do it. It we just didn't happens. Plan it's like, that. oh my god. Yeah. Really yeah. I and think like, Arduino for us is fifty. Yeah. So that yeah. makes no sense. And then one last, I guess one last follow-up. Do, do you know how many products you have? Is uh, uh, something on the order of twenty-four hundred to twenty-five hundred. Okay. Twenty-five hundred more. What are we up to? Well, the the product IDs were up to fifteen twenty-five because I just filled out the sheet for fifteen twenty-five, but. A hundred of those have been discontinued, so it's actually okay. like fourteen hundred. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for, for hanging you. out. All right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, one day we hope to be on your show. So. Which one? Like <laughs> yeah. Yes. Which one? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. You guys we'll have to make a show, and then we'll show up yeah. on we'll, it. We'll figure it out. Oh All right. We'll God, figure can it out. Can you come do electrocute with me? <laughs> yeah. She probably can. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. We'll Thanks for having us. Bye. Here is your moment of Zener. <laughs>